nous qui disons, les talibans, les talibans du Canada. Assault rifles on city streets. Men stopping cars, checking documents. Taunting the authorities. This is Haiti today. More than 150 gangs acting as they please. Most of the gangs are based in Port-au-Prince, the capital. They control large parts of the city, including the major arteries. They have blocked access to the main oil terminal and the law courts. Massacres, stray bullets, kidnapping. The biggest victims are ordinary Haitians. Gangs have been active in Haiti for years, but our observers say things have never been this bad. They're not afraid of the police. They're not afraid of anyone. They're not afraid of the law. The country's economy and politics are in turmoil. After the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse by a hit squad in July 2021. Prime Minister Ariel Henry is in charge, but has little public support. Why are Haiti's gangs so powerful? And what are the authorities doing to stop them? The France 24 Observers team put together this report using amateur images and first-hand accounts from ordinary Haitians, most of them anonymous, to protect them from reprisals by the all-powerful gangs. Classic soul, two sisters dancing along. This video went viral in Haiti after their death in August. Sherwood Sonji Desenclos was 28. Saraji Desenclos, 24. They were killed along with their mother, Josette Fils Desenclos. The killing happened in a suburb of Port-au-Prince. They were killed on their way to a university. They came under attack by a gang known as the Katsan Mawazo, the 400 Mawazo. There are no videos of the attack itself. But this video, filmed once police arrived on the scene, shows the family's car. Jean Simpson Desenclos lost his wife and two daughters that day. When I got there, the street was deserted. All you could see was the remains of our car. There was nothing left of my wife and girls. I had to ID their remains at the funeral parlor. The gang members wanted to kidnap them. But they resisted and the gang members opened fire on them. My whole life went up in smoke. My whole life. The crime shocked the nation and got a pledge from the Prime Minister. I'm disgusted by news of this killing of our countrywomen by armed bandits. It renews my determination to do all I can to fight this crime wave. Such reactions from the government are rare. The authorities are often accused of standing by as gangs commit massacres on a huge scale. Between April 24th and May 6th, the Katson Mawozo fought a bloody battle with the rival Chameshon gang. <laughs> At least 191 people were killed in two weeks, three quarters of them local residents. Survivors fled. Monday night, the shooting was constant. We decided to leave on that Tuesday. The police came in just after we left. 
In the Cité Soleil neighborhood, there was fighting from the 7th to the 17th of July between two coalitions of gangs. G9 en famille et alliés, the G9 family and their allies, led by a former police officer known as Barbecue, and the GPEP coalition, led by T. Gabriel, Little Gabriel. More than 300 people were killed. Residents fled because of the violence and the accompanying shutdown that left their neighborhood cut off. <laughs> The RNDDH, a Haitian human rights group that documented the two massacres, said the police adopted what they called a non-interventionist posture. We at the RNDDH believe that the silence of the authorities is an indication that the armed gangs enjoy protection and blessing from those same authorities. It seems that the people running the Haitian state have decided to abandon their citizens to their fate, being caught in the crossfire between warring gangs. This teenager was hit by a stray bullet. She was interviewed by our observer, one of her neighbors in the Solino neighborhood. There's no actual fighting in Solino, but there are often stray bullets from fighting nearby. Some people hide under their beds to protect themselves from bullets that come through their roofs. Most of the roofs are made of corrugated iron and bullets can get through easily. Residents of Solina have been injured and even killed. One of my friends was lying in bed when he felt something hot fall on his leg. He saw it was a bullet. When he tried to find where it came from, he saw a hole in the roof of his room. A few days later, we were hanging out in the street, having fun. When we heard a noise and found another stray bullet on the ground. We showed photographs of the bullet to an expert in ballistics, and this one. High-velocity rounds that can kill at one kilometer. They are intended for military weapons. The gangs proudly show off such weapons on social media. Here, an M16A2. And here, a Kalashnikov. The gangs are better armed than the police. When there are confrontations between the gangs and the police, it's generally the police that are killed. And most of the time, the police are forced to retreat. US restrictions on arms sales to Haiti mean the police are often outgunned. They also suffer from poor staffing levels and corrupt links between certain officers and the gangs. As for the gangs, weapons are easily available on the black market, most of them from the United States. And the gangs have plenty of cash. One of their main activities is kidnapping for ransom. The leader of a gang called Cinq Secondes, Five Seconds, taunting the police after kidnapping 38 people. One of our observers, whom we'll call Patrick, was kidnapped in the west of the city. He was coming back from work when armed men forced him into a car and took him to a cell. When I arrived in the cell, there were 10 other people there also being held for ransom. They started beating me on the fifth day. They even put a gun in my mouth. There were constant threats. I was scared they'd kill me. Between January and September 2022, 755 kidnappings were recorded in Haiti. They're a regular feature on social networks, posts letting friends and family know a loved one has been kidnapped. People from all neighborhoods and all segments of society are targeted. I had to make an initial payment, in dollars and in the Haitian currency, gourds. Then another payment, this time in dollars only. 
It wasn't $10,000 or $20,000 or even $50,000. No, it was a lot more. We had to negotiate. From a total of X dollars, we eventually got to a payment of Y dollars. Patrick was freed after spending more than a month in captivity. Like other kidnapping victims, he declined to say exactly how much was paid for his release. Many kidnapping victims turned to their family and friends for help. Observers say Haiti's gangs have other sources of cash, business leaders paying for protection and politicians seeking votes. From our findings at the RNDDH, there's no question of ideology in the links the gangs forge with elected officials. The sole motivation appears to be financial. The men and women who run the Haitian state use the gangs to maintain their position and to get re-elected. The gangs also extort money from shopkeepers in the neighborhoods they control, paralyzing the economy. Thousands of Haitians have taken to the streets, fed up with soaring prices and rampant crime, and calling on Prime Minister Ariel Henry to step down. Gang leaders like the G9 family's barbecue pose as leaders of the people, despite the violence their men wreak on the streets. We asked the Haitian police and the prime minister's office to contribute to this report, but they did not respond. In October, Prime Minister Henri appealed to the international community to send an armed intervention force to fight the gangs. The protests that met his proposal suggest that many Haitians see a change of government as a better chance, though still slight, of ending the violence. <laughs>